You have entered the Plumbing Business Success Zone, teaching entrepreneurs the business of plumbing. This is Potty Talk Live, recorded live every week. Turn on notifications to never miss an episode. Now your host, Richard Bainey, the Million Dollar Plumber. Hey, 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 plumbing pros. Welcome to the 348th episode of Potty Talk Live. Hey there, I'm your host, Richard Bainey, the Million Dollar Plumber. Along with my co-host, the love no, I need the lovely Laura. It's Mr. Danny Penn of New Era Plumbing. All right, he's my special co-host today. I can't wait to get to have you hear his story. All right, but I'm glad you're here. Welcome to Potty Talk Live, where we're talking the business of plumbing, how to systemize, stylize, and monetize your plumbing business. Hey, it's great to have you here, it's Danny. It's great to have you here. This is Mr. Danny Penn. Thank you for having me. All right, it's good. To, all right, hey, I can't wait to have you hear his story. He, uh, have him here purposely because tonight's episode is entitled "Winners Don't Quit." This guy's a winner, and he doesn't quit. All right, and I can't wait for you to hear his story. All right, right now where he sits, he looks like you know. Of course, of course, you did it. But when you hear everything he and his uh, lovely better other have gone through, all right, to get there, hey, you're gonna have no excuse. Well, you can't do it too, okay? But I'm glad you're here. Hey, if you're, you're here with us live, please type live in the comments. Let us know you're here live. Welcome to the live social audience. If you're catching the replay, you know what to do. Please type replay. Let us know you caught the replay. And if you're listening to the podcast, keep on listening. All right. Hey, the babes are in the house. All right. Good to have you guys here. Glad you're here. You know, you know the babes, right? Yep. All right. Hey, Jeff <laughs> hey, it's good to have you here. Who else do we have in with us tonight? I'm glad to have everybody here. Danny, I'm so glad you're here. They're here on vacation, okay? And uh, I said, Danny, please. Hey, Drew Thompson's in. Good to have you here, brother. All right. But uh, they're supposed to be here on vacation. <laughs> I said, please do the show. I want you to tell your story. So I can't wait to hear um, you share uh, your story. Um, because you were talking about you know, winners don't quit, and uh, this is a perfect example, so I'm glad you're here, and um, uh, I know you're going to bring it here. All right, Ricky, hey, good to have you here live, buddy. All right. Hey, question for you. It kind of leads to um, tonight's topic here. Our question tonight is, hey, John, good to have you here live as well. Okay. How many times were you tempted to give up on your plumbing business? How many times were you tempted to just to throw the towel in? I think I lost How count. Have you lost count? <laughs> so many times. Yeah. Um, but then I have to realize that I can't quit because if I quit, my kids are looking at me. And uh -huh. I don't quit. I just, if I fall back, if I mean, if I fall down, I'm going to get back up. Here we go. That's what winners do. Um, so, and I just keep pushing forward and just keep attacking, go in attack mode every yeah. single day. Just you know, keep at it, right? Keep at it, yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm sure you felt, and I, we're going to get to it, um, there were times when, yeah, it was just was pretty great. Yes. Um, yeah, it's a great story for sure. So, yep. Yeah, so quitting, I, I even drill it into my um, all my employees as well, that quitting is not in a category of new era, or no. in my personal. I, I don't quit. No. So You can't quit, and that's, that, that's, a, that's key right there, okay? I, I say it all the time. Yeah, thank God for not quitting. Thank you, Ricky. All right, all right. <laughs> you know, it's um, you know, twenty percent. You know, with the Success Academy and you know the coaching and all that. It really, you know, we tell you all the equations and you know what to do, the right systems. You know, we talk about all that, right? You know, it's about twenty percent of it, but eighty percent of winning is up here in your ability to just keep on coming daily i know but quitting is for losers <laughs> so true because that's what you when you quit that's exactly what happens you know you lose right yeah okay um but winners just keep on coming okay and, and not even just quitting in general it's just like sometimes i try to tell myself it's just i think it's just a human thing it's just um if i don't quit but let's find an easy way out of it like a cheat way like a shortcut oh it's just like when we build a system like building a price book Let's just buy their price book instead. Is I was <laughs> arguing with my with my wife about it, and she's like, "No, put the work in." I was like, "I I want to quit and try to throw in the towel." And like, I already did this thing five times already, <laughs> but I'm glad that I stuck through it, and it's it's a game changer. So so not taking the shortcuts, you know, not cheating, you know. Yeah. Um, and that was good. I like I saw Aaron's Aaron's comment there, you know, but you just got to keep on keeping on. Mm -hmm. All right. 
So no, no quitting. We may feel like it, but there's no quitting. Right here, so I can't count how many times I was ready. Learn just uh, get up, keep pushing, all right. Glad I've kept push, not quit. All right, keep, that's what you gotta do. So, well Danny, guys, I want you to listen up here, all right? Hey, share this. Uh, this is the story you wanna hear. Um, I know some of you may know, do we have some pictures here? Dan, this Danny, Danny and Tyee's pen here. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna hear their story, but look at that. There's their, that's New Air Plumbing mm -hmm. out of Boston, mm -hmm. okay? Look at those good looking guys. Justin? Yes. You know, mm -hmm. Justin, that's, okay, look, look at those uniforms. Look at that crew, some of the crew there, all right? <laughs> you know, these guys are getting it done. There's. That's there's right, the, there's the boss. <laughs> That's my queen. Yes, there she is. All right, and look at look at that. You know, um, looking at them now. I mean, they have a beautiful shop, um, beautiful people, beautiful trucks, beautiful uniforms, um, beautiful systems. Um, they're a multi truck. You know, multi million dollar plumbing and HVAC business. Yes. You know, and so looking at you now, it's like a course. I mean, I'm sitting next to Danny Penn. <laughs> you know, right? You know, so of course he's he's all that. But it wasn't always that way. No, not at all. You know, and I really want you to start. I, I want to go way back because th this is the um, this this is the American story um, um, for both uh, Danny's family and Danny's family and Taiz's family weren't born in the U.S. Right? No, right. I I was. You were right, um, but. Your parents, you're yes. originally from Cambodia. So yeah. my so my parents they they came to America um, from the, they they did the, um, they struggled in the Khmer Rouge. They were in that whole. It wasn't that a period. Was that in the seventies where it was a group that were it was coming through and killing a bunch of people, Correct. right? Their own yeah. kind, and yeah, we lost. They lost um, a lot of family members, and my parents had to figure out a way to come to America. Mm -hmm. And when they came to America. They want a better life for the kids, so in the beginning, I took it for granted. Where it was, mm -hmm. it was like, oh, it, I, you know, like I, I'm already here, so what do I have to lose? You know, I was doing the kid stuff, you know, being a child. Then I had to realize, like, I have, I have to break the chain, in my fam, like in my family history, because they were not business owners. We had no money. My parents were struggling with making mm -hmm. ends meet. Um, I have five si five siblings, and now the fact that I went on my own, my sister now is starting her own business. Yeah, and just having creating that mindset for my little brothers as well to look up to me and my kids. And Thais, my wife's family, came from Brazil, <laughs> and Thais was born in Brazil as well. And it's just the struggle that they have to come to America in general, and we take it for granted the fact that. We're here in America, but we have to do something about it. So, like I said, not giving up and just, we're an American dream, so anything is possible. We, we gotta stop playing victim. That I can't do this, I can't start a successful business because I'm not rich or my, I never got handed, or I, I never got handed a company from my, from my, from my dad, dad or from my dad or my mom and right. stuff like that. Like, I'm doing it because I wanna do it and you gotta know your why is why you wanna do it. So. Like, we all came from struggles, and I know a lot of us came from struggles, and um, but we just can't play victim and just keep pushing every single day. See, that's what I love, you know? love about your story. Listen to this, and I hear so many time, times of those guys, you know, and I get it, it's, it's tough. And we find all these excuses, and we're pointing fingers, well, you know, my dad's not this, or I don't come from money, or they're doing this to me, or this is unfair, and all that. And here we have a couple families that aren't, you know, um, come to a different country, can't speak the language, right? Yep. <laughs> Learn a language, doing whatever you can do to make ends meet, all right? And they're not looking for excuses and getting it done, you know? Yeah. It is so, you know, I love it because that is, that, that's the American ideal, yeah. you know? And my, like I said, my parents, they can't even speak English coming here mm -hmm. and um, they had no money to buy grocery for any of us and Thais' parents, her dad was working three jobs just to provide for the, for the company, I mean for the family. Yeah. And it's just, by me giving up, 
I'm gonna look back. I look like a weakling. Like they yeah. didn't give up coming here. It's like, how do you, how do you even manage to even come here? <laughs> you know. So it's just like it's so amazing, and I gotta, I gotta do what I can to just keep the family tradition alive and keep pushing. Well, you know, you can you see, know. you see those pictures, whatever. I mean, they, they've done it, but it didn't happen. Um, you know, in 30 days. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and it didn't happen by just sitting back and and waiting for uh, the calls to come in or you know waiting for a check to be sent or you know blaming everybody so you know you started you started the business you know yeah. well what, what was it what did you call it before new era so yeah. the name was i was very entitled by this name i did not want to rebrand it was sdp and I, it was just my initial and right. i I was so proud of it, and I was like, "Yes, <laughs> no, with the were. flames that everybody has." <laughs> yeah. I'm like, "I'm the cool," and then my wife Thais was like, "We need to rebrand." It had no emotion into it, yep. and we rebranded because we signed up. We met you. Yeah. We met you and Laura, and mm. you guys have changed our life. I words can't even describe it. You know, wow. we love you, and um, so we changed mm. it to New Era. And the meaning behind New Era is because it's a new era in this industry. Mm-hmm. Like it really is. Just everything. Just if you're still using paper, nobody use paper. If you are, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> Richard, Richard got you. Yeah. But it's just like, yeah. you know, building a software, just a new era, everything, you know. A lot has changed in this mm-hmm. plumbing and HVAC industry. So that's why we name it New Era and it shows emotion to the customers and to everything. And you've built so. that culture, though, too. Correct. Yeah. I mean, you, you can feel it in their shop, um, just the, the way they do things, which is so important. You've done that. But before you got to that, what was, um, I mean, there's, 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 there's many. <laughs> I know where I'm going with this. But, but what was a low time? Just so you can relate. I mean, I should, see if you can relate. I mean, we've all have been there. And you, we, you know, the question was, have you ever felt like giving up? You know, that's usually when you hit a low, have a low time, right? Yeah. What, what was a, a low time that, that you guys experienced? I think a biggest low time, th- there's a lot. Um, <laughs> I can share one, I can fast forward to, but one was when I started the business and doing new construction. We we were their bank of contractors and we have no money in the bank. So we switched to, with no money, we switched to service. Mm-hmm. And then by starting service, just from the beginning, just the rebranding and everything, we had like no money. We we're like in the negatives <laughs> and we did not give up. And I remember to this day that the biggest low time that we had is I did a live with my wife. We were walking by the river in that area and it was like a cloudy mm-hmm. day mm-hmm. we were we were crying and we're like we're not giving up and we reached out to our parents <laughs> Richard and Laura and they said okay. spread the blood of um, Jesus all over your business and that's what we did and we just k- keep ahead up and for some reason I just don't know how to explain it but our mm-hmm. costs are coming in we got a thousand dollars in the bank and then they increased to two thousand mm-hmm. bills were getting paid I and it's just like and we just start growing every every day and just keep keep pushing but I I, I remember to this day that was like yeah. my biggest like that was a low time that we had I, I remember that moment yeah uh, you know Laura sitting over here behind the and uh, mm-hmm. we're not nodding we, we remember that moment mm-hmm. when you guys were walking um, doing that that video uh, just to speak and walking it was a gray day cold no money didn't know what to do. You guys ever feel like this? You know, the world's gonna end right then. No calls. No calls. We had no no good employees. We're hiring yeah. and like unexperienced guys, just to have guys to say like, look at we have guys. But it's just we didn't know what to do. You know, and, and what I what I admire admire, and this is what I love about what you know, you led us in our lives, and I say this about you know, a lot of our our, cli- our, our clients and um, you know, it's a privilege that um, you know, we get to work with so many cool people, and it's a blessing. And and um, and I appreciate the kind words. Um, you know, we we've just introduced a, a system. You know, things to do and things not to do. Yep. But it all comes down to your willingness to take the fight on, to get back up off the canvas, and keep on coming. I mean, that's always as a coach. That's what I'm trying to do is keep on coming. And that's what I so admire about you and Thais, is that. Even in that low, I remember that you were there was tears, and um, and um, and uh, there was emotions, mm-hmm. but it wasn't blame. It wasn't that you were blaming everybody else or whatever. It was like, 
it was just there's, there's, there's like a lot there's just that pain so you had to release that pain but you kept on coming you got back up you kept on coming you yep. kept on coming what what was in you what do you think is in you in Thais that that was able to get you up off the, the canvas and to keep on coming when when others others don't what, what's in you I think it's just uh, we were hungry like we mm -hmm. we ha we have to prove it to ourselves more than anything um, and then I think the most important thing too is not letting not to fail when the kids are looking at us so I think that's just like we're not giving up we're not going backwards so mm. like we're not and that's why we just keep on going every day I love that that's that, the fire that we have in us you know you know Laura and I call that burning the ships yep. there just isn't there's no there's no other place to go but forward it doesn't mean it's easy it doesn't mean it hurts doesn't mean it's not scary, yeah. you know. Doesn't mean it doesn't make you cry sometimes. Uh, you got those scary nights, um, you know, in the early days, and even some other times. You know, Laura, you just, you know, you're kind of huddled, huddled in bed together, yep. and just, uh, you know, what, what are we gonna do? And I and, uh, and I know how like we overcame it because, like I said, we can't. We were one of them like playing victim, where it's like, we mm -hmm. can't do this. The competition is doing this. They're getting all the job. How I pay too much attention to the competition for no reason. Yeah. So I stopped that. And also it's just like playing victim where it's like this marketing company that we have is not giving us leads. So yeah. I need to, the, what I need to do as a man is to to get a, a better marketing company. If they don't work out, they're gonna be let go as well. Yeah. But it's not just up to them. We can't always blame our marketing company. We have to do something to also help with a brand and get brand recognition. So we help out the community a lot. We also help out with like a local restaurants and doing videos and live, getting out of our comfort zone, you know, hiring. You know, the biggest thing is just like, we're not getting technician. We have Indeed and all this other stuff. We're not getting technician. What right. do I need to do? I need to create a culture. I need to create this. I need to get a company to come out and shoot my company and put ads out everywhere and just like the supply house and no one calls that we do like uniforms like we got to do something different than the competition is not doing different so i think that's another another thing to stop playing victim and just keep doing it and that's what i was doing that's that's a big that's a huge nugget here guys um is, is the victim thing you know we had that's pervasive in our society today of um you know blaming everybody else and um, you know, being offended and uh, all those kinds of things. You, you can't win that way, all right? You, you, got, you got to move forward. And it doesn't mean it's, you know, doesn't, you know, it's not hard and you know, those kinds of things, but, but you got to keep moving forward. And that's what I love about you and, you and Thais, that even through all the hard times, you didn't whine. Winner, winners aren't whiners. They didn't whine. Even when they were crying, that, that, was, that was just an emotional release. But it, in, in their tears, they weren't saying, the marketing company just won't do it, and this won't happen. There, there was nothing like that. It was just the, the release of, of the fear. And, and then through that, it's like, hey, what can we do? What, what, what can we do better? You know, what, what's a different direction? We don't know the direction we can take right now, but what, maybe you can get it. Thais is great. She was, she's found so many you know, good, good things. You know, she's found uh, the marketing company. Um, you know, yeah. like one that we, we re really recommend, Home, um, home and Local Services. Yes. That was Thais the found, <laughs> that discovered that. It wasn't, uh, wasn't me. <laughs> that, that was Thais, you know, looking. What, what can we do better, you know? Well, what's better out there? Yep. And, uh, and I just love that, that you guys have done that. Yeah, you've you know? you got to get out of your, your comfort zone, too, and you have to, like, think outside the box of things, of, like, doing things. Like, my technicians... Is not happy. Mm -hmm. Why they're not happy? You gotta ask yourself that. It comes from you first. So, and I think the reason why we also didn't quit and how we is building every day to be a successful company is first it has to come with me. I have to improve on myself first more than anything before I can even run a successful business. If you're looking, if mm -hmm. you're looking to build yourself, look for like a class, look read some books. You need yeah. to do some personal growth. Like that's what I had to do because my mind wasn't there. I focused too much on the business and. Second, the most important thing is you need to work on your marriage. <laughs> I, my marriage is falling, so when my marriage falls, my company falls. Mm -hmm. So it's just like that what I need to work on. So, 
That's, that's a huge nugget of gold right there. Hey, Danny, you, I know you're gonna be back with more nuggets of gold here, but because you're here, of course I have something for you, right? All right, it's my million dollar plumber blueprint. We discussed some of these things that Danny's talking about it, okay? All the specs you need to, to start a successful, self-sustaining, keyword there, self-sustaining. His business is home making money while he's here on vacation. All right, that's a great place to be, right? Yeah. All right, and being very profitable at the same time, all right? It's all in there in my Million Dollar Plumber Blueprint, and it's free, all right? It doesn't cost you anything, all right? Simply type free in the comments or go to themilliondollarplumber.com forward slash free to grab your free blueprint today, all right? Do it. All right, Danny, man, great stuff so far. I hope you guys are listening because this is the real deal, all right? Um, no excuse, okay? Um, families where they come from, no inside, no extra money, no nothing. Boston, Boston is a tough market. I hear from others, well, my market's tough. My customers, they don't get any tougher than Boston, guys. Come on, those are hardcore people out there, <laughs> all right? So it's, but yet they're getting it done and where they're sitting today because they just, they found, they found the way, okay? They did the things that need to be done. And they found, found other ways to get things done and they just kept moving forward. Yep. So Danny, what in, in, in your business, what was a time that was that you can see and, and maybe see it as a turning point or an epiphany or something, you know, that where it just clicked? Where all of a sudden, oh, this is this is what I need to do, or this is what it's all about. I think it was just the failure at first, like keep blaming myself, whereas like I can't do this, I can't do that. So I just kinda I was just driving and I'm like I need a turning point right now. I, I need something to change. So something needs to change had to start with me. Mm. And that's what I just, like that's what I said earlier too because I had to work on myself first. That's the biggest turning point of anything. I can't work on my business and have uh, my mindset and yeah. everything just all full of anger and blaming everybody, blaming my wife, blaming my kids, blaming the dog, I, <laughs> it's just everything, you know, it's just, so I had to work on myself and I think that was the biggest turning point for me because the moment I started changing, I can see the whole company, the culture is just, it's just happy. Like, it's just like a great, everybody's smiling. And it's not just for me saying it, it's just like, you can visit a shop, you can, even a sales rep and everybody mm -hmm. that comes, that everybody that comes into our office, like, man, I never seen this everywhere. Everybody that come from the meeting is always happy. Everybody that you see in the shop is always happy because it started with me because I had to become a better leader. Mm. That's the most important thing. I have to lead the way. Oh. So, and I've definitely seen that. Um, obviously, you can probably tell there's a little bit of a relationship here. Um, it was professional. Um, Danny and Thais are, are clients, uh, private clients of Laura and I. Um, but it's grown into much more than that. You can probably hear, you know, I got the grandkids in. They brought the grandbaby <laughs> in, and uh, and so it's, we feel that way. And. Um, and certainly, so we, we've had a lot of time together here, and I've seen Danny go, I've seen you go from being quiet and reserved, which you're a quiet and controlled kind of guy, but you were really reserved and you were really sitting back. Yeah. And you were some anger, quiet anger in there. And now he's out front and in control of things. In fact, we're so, when it hit, it was, was it just a couple weeks ago, sweetheart, that we were on a, a call with them, mm -hmm. and something was the system was down. Like Service Titan happened to be down. There's something fluky happened with with Service Titan. Calls weren't coming in, and Danny would normally be all uptight about it, but he was like he was like cool, you know. I was like, hey, it'll, be, it'll come. We'll get it worked out. Yep. <laughs> it'll come together. <laughs> that's that's what a leader does, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's what you you've grown into. Yeah, everything will with. be all right. We we focus on the. There's like a little twenty percent um, of like little problems, and we make it as an eighty percent all the time. Yeah. We need to figure out what that twenty percent is, throw it out the window quickly, and then focus on the eighty percent right away. Focus on better things. It's just like you're gonna get mad. It's gonna ruin your whole day. I was I was one of them. I I did that. And you know I, Mrs. Jones gave me a bad review. Mrs. Jones said my price is high, hmm. and I take that for a whole week, and it ruined my whole week of business and my relationship everything right so it's just like i just threw that out the window just like got to move on from it so yeah we see it all the time that Danny, thank you man that was so guys listen to that that was a huge nugget right there 
Um, this is a big mistake a lot of guys make is they get a bad review and it just it just blows the world and they just focus on it and they also put that out everywhere i just got a bad review and all that or the truck gets in a little accident or something the truck just got it in a little accident and oh, oh, the whole world's coming unglued or you know the the marketing company didn't come through you know the phone's not ringing you know you, know, you just signed with the marketing company and you paid the big check you know and it's a week later the phone still ain't ringing and all that all you know everyone's coming unglued yeah. you can't live like that you can't grow like that no nope. You know, and you, you just got to be able to, you know, take it as it comes. And leaders got to be cool. If you're cool, the team will be cool and things fall into place. Yep. You know, I love it. Mm -hmm. Danny, great stuff. That's why you got to be a lion, not a sheep. All right. Oh, there's your hat. I see it on your hat. <laughs> Lions, not sheep, guys. You know, so. need more lions. Yes. The business, hey, you know, it, it, Aren't the systems and all that really pretty simple? Isn't it really pretty simple? Yes. So you have to create a simple system for your technician to use. If you don't know how to use it yourself, what do you think that the technicians, <laughs> if you think they're capable of doing it, they're not. Like, we're, they're just the body, we're the mind. I'm sorry right. I have to say that, but we're the brains of the operation, so we have to create a simple, simple sy system and mm -hmm. have them go to the job and train them too, like how to handle objections like because it's going to come you're not going to walk into mrs jones door and it's like here's five thousand dollars right i want to sign that right away like <laughs> there's going to be an objection with that and you have to train your technician to it's like a video game that's what it is and as nuera as me as a leader i provide them with all the weapons so they're going in there it's like they're walking just think of like this aisle and there's every doors right and it's like a video game it's just okay my price is high handle that shut the door what's next Oh, you cost more than everybody else. Oh, the other right. company. I'm. Oh, I need to think about this for my wife. Shut that door. Handle that, and just consistently training the technicians and handling it. And by doing that, you're not playing the victim card. Where the technician won't know what they're doing. It's like it started with you first. If you did that and the technician's still not understanding it, then that's when you gotta have a sit talk and talk with them. And if they still don't get it, that's when you have to. Move on. Move on. Fire them. <laughs> That's why you're always hiring. But it started with you first. We always quickly to blame on other people. You know, so it's a game. I love that you use that analogy as a game. Um, not to. I, we got to diverge here a little bit. That I, I was an air traffic controller in the Navy, which a lot of people think that's a very hard job, and it, it is. And and I in my training, we started with a class of 36, and only six of us finished. And I happened to do work very well in the class. Whenever I was a million dollar plumber, I was number one in the class. Okay, but I was asked what, how, how did I handle it? I looked at it as a game. If you looked at it as people are going to die here, or I'm being judged, or whatever, you know, those kinds of feelings, it would it would overtake you emotionally with everything going on. Your mind would get lost in stuff with yeah. all the stuff, the aircraft, and the movement, and everything going on. But if you looked at it as a video game, it just became a game. And so that is the same kind of thing that I tried to make with my guys, make, make this whole process a game. Simple, it's just, you know, when, I love your analogy. So if the door closes here, then Mr. Jones says that, okay, well then we move over here. You know, we move the Pac-Man over here. Yep. You know, if the ghosts are coming this way, we move Pac-Man this way. Okay, if they're coming this way, we move Pac-Man this way. That's, a, that's an old video game, by the way. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> okay, so it's, you gotta look at it like a game. You know, I love yeah. that analogy. And that's why you're successful. Well, here, I, you know, we're getting low on time here. But before we go, you drop so many nuggets of gold here. But what is something, you know, we got, we got guys and gals here, you know, we got PPCs here. Yep. You know, what, what could, what's a piece of advice or a nugget that you can leave, leave with them that may be in a situation that we've talked about where, you know, it's just, you know, the calls aren't coming in, you know, the money's low, I'm scared. Um, I think the, the nugget that I will bring first before like the calls coming in, I think that if you're in the, if you have your own business right now and your wife is not in it, I would do that first because I couldn't run this business without my wife at all, like at all. Mm -hmm. That's the second most important thing. Brainstorm, write your GPS, like get a journal and write and plan stuff, write your goals and not, and like think what you're gonna do next. And like, 
know your why's and know like doing your core values not just have a not just building your core values and then putting it on the board mm -hmm. on a wall and never use it and never implement that in a company meeting you know like mm -hmm. you have to do that i think that's the biggest thing too so by doing that and creating the creating a culture don't do it because you don't want to just do it just to do it you want to do it because you really wanted to do it and mm -hmm. just watch it's just gonna happen i can't explain it but everything just falls in place you know <laughs> That's God, good. God just has His ways. So, yeah. I, um, it does come together. It does. Come I together. love it when a plan comes together. It does come together if you stick with it. You don't let it. Don't let it. You know, it is going to knock you down, but yeah. you just got to. You just got to keep on coming. Yeah, and I you know? and I like it too. When I hate to say it, but I like it when things do fail a little bit mm -hmm. because yeah. it makes me stronger. Yeah. It makes me like okay, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna tackle this and I'm gonna come back ten times harder. So I like I don't like when stuff is too easy, you know. I like a challenge. So there we go. Got to have some fight in you too. Yep. There we go. All right, Danny. Thank you. I love you, brother. Love you too, son. All right. Oh man, great stuff here, guys. You know, go back and you know give it a listen. You know, if you, if you didn't catch it all, um, you know, I know I know you would say it. I, I say it all the time. If I can do it, you can do it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but you got to keep up. You got you got to keep on keeping on, all yeah. right. And um, you also got to uh, improve yourself. Okay, you, you got to know this stuff, all right. And if you're, you're looking to to know more about uh, growing a successful plumbing business, all right, um, then you need to check out my Million Dollar Plumber Success Academy, all right. Everything in there is actually you know we walk you 12 modules, teach you every aspect of the business that, that you've got to know, okay. <laughs> Um, from knowing your, your honest hourly rate. Yes. You know, one of your favorite, your flat rate, flat rate taskmaster, creating your own flat rate pricing. Everybody's favorite. Yeah. Pretty tough, right? I have a lot to share about that too. Yeah. Yeah. I can bring that up. But yeah. All right. All right. Uh, the right kind of marketing. Okay. Um, and, you know, and the right kind of trucks and, you know, supplies, all, all those kinds of things. It's all in there, okay, in the Success Academy. And you can check it out for free, 14-day free trial. Simply type success in the comments or go to themilliondollarplumber.com forward slash success, all right? So grab your free trial as well. So there we go. All right, Danny, again, thank you. Thank you for having me. All right, thank you for Good sharing. Honor. All right, appreciate you being here on your vacation. I'll be all back right. in two weeks, too. Yeah, you will. You will be. <laughs> all right, we got the MVP that's coming down, yeah, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, glad to have you here as well. And as always, I want to remind you that you were purposely, wonderfully created, and you were created to do great things. So plumb like a champion. Thank you for tuning in to Potty Talk Live with Richard Bainey, the Million Dollar Plumber. If you enjoyed this show, share it now. Just do it. To catch past episodes and get alerts for new episodes, turn notifications on now. And join us again for more tips, techniques, and strategies to help you grow your plumbing business.